you have learned about wood characteristics in Woods 1, though fairly limited, and we're going to do things a little more extensive this time. So this is a hardwood tree illustration. I've, I've never seen an actual tree like that with leaves on one side and bare on the other. But the definition of a hardwood tree, there's its forest, is it's deciduous, meaning it loses its leaves in the fall. And I want you to look at that gorgeous forest there with the light shining in uh, we don't have forests like this in our state. This is a hardwood forest. Uh, when we go up in the canyon, we'll probably see some coniferous forests, but very rarely a forest like this of big, tall trees. And will you note also that there's this canopy. Right, so there's very little branches down below and the leaves on top. Uh, here, right, so the, the leaves are up top and that's why trees grow tall and straight and branchless. This makes for good furniture. Your trees in your front yard are lame furniture woods because they have branches growing out of them, right, out of the lower parts of the trunk, and that creates knots. Not so here. So for a sapling to survive, it has to grow very tall so that it reaches the canopy where it can find sunlight. Now a softwood tree is like that forest and notice that it is the same right big tall trees with just um, these generally uh, on the top of the tree uh, as you enter into the forest same reason it needs to grow tall to absorb the light called a coniferous tree because it is cone bearing tree and uh, keeps its needles you're round. I have here listed a bunch of species, and I want to know whether it's a hardwood, a softwood, or and some of its characteristics. First, alder. It is a hardwood. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this on all these. <laughs> That's too much work. Um, because it loses its leaves and alder is kind of a pale brown. We have this, the a sample of alder up in our classroom. Cherry is also a hardwood. Now this is not the cherry of fruit. Uh, it is It's a relative of them of that tree and the American black cherry grows on the east coast as is the case with most of these and uh, it grows tall and big and it produces a small black cherry that is birds eat <clears throat> a deep reddish brown ages with time uh, it darkens right walnut lightens cherry darkens now red oak as opposed to a white oak, but they're very similar uh, in grain structure, is also a hardwood. It's kind of a reddish pink, uh, not as red as cherry. Cherry gets much, much, much darker than oak is. Very popular though, um, very coarse grain, whereas cherry is kind of smooth. Oak is rough. Uh, this, by the way, is an oak leaf. Isn't that nice? Walnut is a hardwood. This is the tree that produces the nut that we eat. And its characteristics are very dark, 
uh, wood, the darkest domestic wood that we have, domestic meaning in the United States. Uh, an exotic wood is comes from outside the United States. Uh, that would be mahogany down below is a uh, exotic wood. So walnut is the darkest domestic wood we have, and and every student loves walnut because of its darkness. Remember though that it tends to lighten over time, as opposed to cherry, which darkens over time. So you might say, but McNeil, ebony, that's darker. Rosewood, that's darker than walnut. And you are correct, but those are exotic woods. They come from other places in the world. Uh, this is a walnut leaf. Maple, hard maple, as opposed to a soft maple. But both of those are hardwoods because they come from a deciduous tree. A soft maple tends to be slightly less dense than hard maple. This is the tree that we get maple sugar from, uh, maple syrup from. It's very sweet and um, it is the lightest domestic wood that we have, uh, super light and uh, also very, very dense. This is a maple leaf, the one we cherish for its deep red and orange colors in the fall. Also the Canadian flag symbol. Poplar is also a hardwood that is used very um, much in moldings and other painted wood applications. <clears throat> Poplar is wonderful to work with. It's very smooth and buttery and uh, doesn't take a stain so well and not so attractive by itself as opposed to cherry, walnut, maple, oak. They're much more attractive woods to look at than poplar and that's why we don't use it that often. Pine is a softwood. This is our first softwood tree. How about that, S? And this one we do have in our canyons, uh, lots of pine. Its characteristics are uh, very sappy and kind of a yellowish brown color. Mahogany is our is an exotic wood, meaning it comes from different parts of the world, and there are different mahoganies. The one that we have in the classroom is comes from Africa. It is a hardwood. The mahogany tree is very large, and uh, that's why our boards that we get are humongous. And the characteristics of mahogany is it's kind of a, a, a rich red brown, a coarse ground grain, relatively soft in its density, right? Still a hardwood because it's a deciduous tree, uh, but uh, relatively soft, easy to carve. We use it, it's a great tone wood. We use it for our guitar backs and bodies, uh, sides too. Now let's go to aromatic cedar. Uh, which is also a softwood and there are different types of cedar also but the one i'm referring to is aromatic it, and it's often used in a cedar chest because of the smell the aroma that it gives and is supposed to ward away moths and other things that like to eat clothing whether that's true or not i am uncertain it has kind of a a brownish, a yellow, even a purple color when it's freshly cut. Now this slide represents the way that we get our trees and our lumber, right? It's not like it just shows up and grows at Intermountain Wood Products. That's just not the way it works. Or we don't go down and cut these trees down ourselves, uh, though we could. Um, if we have them. So first we start with the forest. And from there it is then 
the loggers, cut them. And that's a pretty cool machine, right? You can see cutting the tree right there and it grabs it and cuts it at the same time and then loads it onto the truck where it is transported to a, a mill where they're going to cut it up. I might say too that most of our wood doesn't come from Utah. It comes, there are, don't get me wrong, there are um, a few mills in places that harvest trees in Utah, um, but not very many, right? Most of the hardwoods we get are from back east, uh, Pennsylvania, and the conifers come from Wisconsin. Um, and there's some on the west coast also. Oregon produces a huge amount of uh, coniferous trees and um, also plywoods come from there. Uh, Roseburg, Oregon, especially where I visited, they're an awesome place in Washington. And we eat a lot of our maples, our soft maples from up there, but generally our cherries and walnuts and most of our softwoods are not coming from there, they're coming from the east coast where trees are much, much more plentiful. So then it goes to the lumber mill uh, where they take these tr big trunks and they cut them into boards with um, saws. And they have, look at this big old massive blade that is cut there as it runs through. After they cut them into boards, they're stacked and dried. And this is a kiln a drying kiln, which commercially is used much more than air drying, and we'll talk about that in a minute. There's the forklift heft hefting these pallets of boards and letting them sit for a few weeks in these drying kilns that pulls the moisture out of them. Then it's go gone to the distributor, right? For us, that's Intermountain Wood Products or Macbeth Hardwoods or High Mountain lumber products or any number of uh, national hardwoods is another big one here in Salt Lake where uh, they distribute, right? They just get the wood in and then they distribute it out to us, uh, to Corner Canyon. We, I call and order it and they bring it out uh, in a truck and we put it in the lumber room. So that's nice. And you can, of course, go down to Intermountain and buy your own stuff and uh, see lots of things. And um, sometimes I'll require that of you, but not always. Now let's talk about the tree and the parts of a trunk first. Lots of good vocab here. The pith is the center, right? It's the core of the tree uh, where it all begins. The sapwood, this here, notice it's lighter in color and often sapwood is light, especially in cherry and walnut and maple. All of those have the lighter color in the trunk as well as the heartwood which is dark and <clears throat> you may or may not have seen those areas. So cherry is known for its dark, deep red, and that's the heartwood of the tree. The sapwood is light and usually undesirable, although I think it looks pretty too. In walnut, it's the same. The heartwood is the dark wood and heartwood is not alive it's the sapwood, right? So as a tree grows, it puts on another ring and another ring and another ring. And then the core of the tree kind of dies and doesn't have activity. And that's what changes its color. It still provides structure, but the water and nutrients are all coming up in the sapwood. So walnut is loved for its heartwood, not so much its sapwood. Now maple, it's just the opposite. In maple, we love the sapwood because it's so light. The heartwood is uh, not as desirable for most people. We have growth rings, and this would represent a growth ring right there. 
or right there, and every year it puts on another ring. Now within a ring, and this is where I'm looking, right here, we have the early wood and the late wood. The early wood is the springtime when there's lots of water and lots of sunshine generally, and both of those produce a heavy growth. And so an, in an annual ring, generally, the early wood will be quite large and then the late wood will be a little bit smaller. It's also generally a little more dense. Now this photo doesn't show you very well the early wood and the late wood. Uh, a subsequent photo will show that a little bit better and but you know what it looks like. You just don't recognize it. Late wood comes in the summertime and usually in the fall, and there's even a little bit of growth, I think, in the winter, but not very much. Most of the tree is dormant. And, um, but in the summer, you think it would grow really plentiful too, but it doesn't because there's not water. There's lots of sunshine and heat, and that sometimes stifles the growth. Whereas spring, right, it's cool. There's lots of water from rain. And uh, so in late wood, that's not the case though. It's in the summertime and in the fall when there's less water. We have the outer bark uh, here that protects the tree. And the inner bark also uh, here, right? Um, the secondary phloem and the cork cambium. Mostly, we take that bark off, even on a live-edged board that is very desirable for many people. Uh, the bark just falls off of it, so uh, usually we get the tree without the bark on it. Now, a word about the rays. That's this, and it doesn't even show very well what this means. It's this right there, these lines that are growing out. It's the way nutrients are traveled from uh, inside here of the softwood and when it grows. And then, of course, those rays are left in the heartwood also. But medullary rays that grow radial from the center produce this really cool look in woods, especially white oak, but all woods have medullary rays. And uh, you'll see those in a later slide. Woods have natural defects, uh, such as warp. And within that warp, we have bow, crook, cup, and twist. Say that fast, bow, crook, crook, cup, twist. Bow, crook, cup, twist. Bow, crook, cup, twist. <clears throat> we also have checks and shake and knots. This is a check. That's our number one there. Notice that it goes, it's a crack that goes uh, across the growth rings. This, number two, is a shake. It's when it splits along the growth ring. And generally, right, this is happening because of poor uh, drying. Number three is a knot caused from a branch that is growing from the trunk. And, uh, right, these are all known as defects. What causes these? Generally improper drying or too fast of drying. That's as far as the warp up here and also number one and number two. Of course, those are caused from branches. And these warp defects, you'll see, the more you process lumber, the more you see this. Okay, lumber cuts. Um, 
Notice the plain song. Okay, so uh, lots of things going on here. Maybe let's start start on the left. And depending on where the board is cut out of the log, it produces different rings. So a flat sawn produces rings that are 0 to 35 degrees to the edge of a board. And notice that it's taken generally from this area here. This says flat sawn. Plain sawn is another name for it. And generally, we will get, when it's cut in the lumber mill, they'll cut for plain sawn boards. And it's just a straight cut. It is, it's the most economic. It's the easiest. Of course, out of all those cuts come all three of those, but that's where they get mostly plain sun cuts. And big cathedrals, look down here now, a plain sun board that comes from this area of a tree where it gets those rings coming across like that, produces these big cathedrals in the face of the board. A rift sun, cut notice it's coming over here and now the growth rings are 35 to 65 degrees to the edge and a rift sawn board is often cut in a lumber mill like this to get the rift sawn look and on the face of the board it looks like this much different look than a plain sawn board and then a quarter sawn cut comes from immediate here where the growth rings are like 65 to 90 degrees to the to the face and call the quarter sawn because of the way it's cut if you want to yield all quarter sawn wood you have to quarter it like this and then cut it this direction and you get that cut. Now here is a quarter sawn look on the face of a board and you can see the growth rings are very straight. Now these squirrely looking things, wormy, strange, that are the medullary rays that grow in the tree and it produces pretty cool looking stuff often called fleck and in white oak which is what this is uh, pictured it's really quite attractive. Uh, interestingly, but not uh, unexpectedly, plain sawn wood is less expensive. Quarter sawn and rift sawn are more expensive because of the waste that it produces. Like look at a quarter sawn board here, how you get very little um, of these little boards that becomes waste right there. And so your biggest stuff is taken from that area right there. And then we got more waste. As opposed to a plain sun board, there's only like waste there and waste there. <clears throat> uh, well, there's all my drawings uh, over <laughs> this. But uh, notice the quarter sun cut here, the rift. Now these are the growth rings. We generally purchase flat sun wood. Uh, though you can special order these. Our mahogany that we get, the exotic wood mahogany for guitars, is almost always quartered. <clears throat> Another thing I want to mention about this um, improperly dried, just because they're dry in a kiln and we get them from the distributor, it doesn't mean that they don't have those checks in them. So you should always look, check for the checks. That's what you should do, check for the checks. Look for um, those cracks in the end of the board and avoid them. Cut them off. The end of the board, I cut, you cut them off, no problem. Four, five, sometimes six, seven, eight inches uh, just to get rid of those checks or use a portion of the board that doesn't have that check in it. I go back to this slide. Air dried lumber, the problem is it takes so long to do and it's not very economic for most mills to do this. They just don't generate enough income. So 
the air drying usually happens by homeowners with trees on their property, uh, though you can purchase air dried lumber. Now grading lumber. So uh, this means the way wood is sorted and priced. You know this now because of buying lumber, right? It comes in different grades. And generally, uh, the best two grades, depending on the species, in walnut, it's called FAS, which is first and seconds. In cherry, it's called select. And in both cases, it has 88% clear face. That means without knots in it. A select in particular, that's only one side, one face of the board. The other face has more. It's more of a number one common, which is 66% clear. Right? Notice then that just because it's FAS or select doesn't mean it has knots. It's just mostly it doesn't have knots. A bigger portion of it is not free. The next grade down is number one common at 66.6% .6 clear face. Uh, number one common is what we get our cherry from, is number one common. We have number two common, which is a 50% clear face. And then rustic is the last, or the, the worst grade, and it is 33.3% .3 clear face. Our walnut is rustic uh, because it's less expensive. You now know that... Uh, FAS walnut is extremely expensive, four times the amount of rustic. I've also learned that rustic walnut ha is all dark. There's very little sapwood in rustic walnut, whereas in FAS has quite a bit of sapwood. So <clears throat> there you go. Sometimes these two phrases, S2S and S4S, is used to define lumber, uh, meaning smooth two surfaces or smooth four surfaces. And you can order it from the lumber yard like this. They will plane it and join it and table saw it and prepare it for you uh, at a price, of course, and we get all of our lumber uh, rough. Uh, when you go to Home Depot and buy hardwoods, you can buy poplar and oak and walnut and cherry, all from Home Depot. It is extremely expensive from them, uh, probably three or four times the amount that you get it rough uh, from the lumber yard. And that's because it is S4S at Home Depot, meaning it has been smoothed for surfaces. And generally, I don't like to use wood that has already been surfaced because it might have warped and then there's no extra wood to square out of it.